Hello, everybody. Andrew Majewski here with Dental L. So let's let's um let's go through the portfolio. And specifically in this video, I want to talk about your typical day because um, this can be very confusing to a lot of people. But let me first tell you that things have changed for the better. Like I'm talking when I was first audited because I have been audited before. When I would say about, I think it was six years ago, five or six years ago, we had to write out our typical day per dental office in paragraph form. Like it was literally probably 10 pages because you would have to list everything. Every single step that you did from literally walking in the door. So let's say you came in with your street clothes on, you would have to explain how you basically took them off and put on your work uniform, how you then washed your hands, you know, everything. It was ridiculous if I can say that. So things are so much better that you're not allowed to complain at all. Okay. At all. So let me just um, walk you guys through that. And the reason why I want to walk you guys through it is because a lot of people think that you have to say yes to everything on your typical day. You do not. And I'm going to go through every question with you. So when you first log in, um, click on your smile portal here um, over to your left hand side. Actually, let me zoom in for you guys. Smile portal here, left hand side and then click on continue to your secure third party site. So if you haven't logged in yet to your CDHO platform, you might have to send me an email because this will probably be very overwhelming to you, but I'm kind of assuming that you all have at some point. Um, actually, you would have had to because you have to fill out your self assessment every single year. So unless you're a new hygienist, of course, but if you're a new hygienist, you will not be audited. So anyways, you guys, so, but if you have questions, I guess, let me know. So then you will get to this point and um, click on the year 2019. And then, I mean, depending on when you're watching this, just click on the year where you are now. Okay. So, and then click on your learning portfolio off to the left-hand side here. Let's go see, actually, sorry, no, sorry. It may not be under the learning portfolio. I'm thinking about how to manage your portfolio. So sorry, it's not that one. Let me see, and I just did this the other day because I was preparing to do the video for you guys. So let me take a look for one moment. There, so what I want you guys to do is to not click on learning portfolio. So pretend I didn't say that. Click on the next one. So it is called your practice profile. Click on that, so that would be number five over to your left-hand side. Now, let me first say, you have to fill out one of these per practice. So um, per, per practice that you're currently working at. So if you're a temp hygienist who is working in let's say 10 different offices, yes, you do have to fill in 10 different practice profiles, um, commonly known or previously known as your typical day. So depending on who you're talking to, but in your CDHO website um, tool here, it is called your um, practice profile. So fill one out for every office that you currently are at. So if you were practicing in an office for three months, six months ago, but you're not there anymore, you do not have to fill this out. Yes, it is long, but you guys, all you have to do is click. No um, like short form, no um, paragraphs, none of that. It's so easy. So I'm just going to walk you guys through this. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. Um, and I'm going to publish this onto YouTube. So depending on where you're listening or watching this, um, I'm going to publish this onto YouTube. If you have any questions, let me know. I go through this even further in my, um, um, what am I trying to say here? My portfolio um, workshop online. So if you're taking the, or sorry, if you're taking, if you're handing in your portfolio, um, I do have a portfolio workshop online for that to walk you through everything. And if you're taking your quality assurance exam instead, I do have this video inside that also. Um, Cause I do have a separate course for that called your quality assurance self-study course, or sorry, oh my goodness, 
your quality assurance study guide course. Okay, guys, sorry. Okay, <laughs> so let's go through this. So under the assessment phase, now there's no wrong answer. Well, there is wrong answers, I suppose. But if you're looking through this and saying, for example, oh, um, for the perio exam, it's talking about PSR. Well, I don't do a PSR. Then say never. That is okay because they're not going to call you or send you a letter if you're not doing a PSR as long as you say you 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 are probing um, on your patients. Okay, so does that make sense? So I don't want people to think, oh well, it's saying here um, like all of this means that I have to always be doing it. No, you need to be truthful. Do not lie because if you're going through this. And then saying, oh, clinical attachment levels, I don't do at all. Well, then say never, but you obviously should be, right? So then that's probably going to be part of, of your portfolio or part of something new that you will be implementing for this year or next year. So you could always say um, in the little spot that they um, provide here, say, um, I'm not currently um, recording clinical attachment levels, but I do plan on doing that now. They don't give you a lot of text space, so keep it short, but um, I did add a couple things too. So as an example, so the first one here is to review and update the client's medical, um, medical history. Now for this one, yes, you should always be doing it because if you're not, well, that's just a no-no because if you're not updating it, then you're probably missing something. And that's very important. Um, to determine um, clients' oral health priorities, well, that I would say is very important too. And that is something that we are probably always doing anyway, even if we're not saying to our clients, so what are your oral health priorities? We're not saying that, right? But we do ask them things like, do you have any tooth issues? Do you have any sore teeth? Or if, um, if the dentist tells them you do need three crowns and then we say to the client afterwards, do you have any questions? And the client might say, um, I don't want those crowns. Well, that's talking about their oral health priorities. Um, taking the vital signs. So this is something that I do not do at every appointment. Um, and that's a fine line where the rules state we should be for every new patient exam. And it's, um, it's recommended to, to do this at every appointment, but I do not because we don't have to, if that makes sense, right? So I'm not going to lie and say that I do always do it because let's just say hypothetically, um, I get audited in such a way where the CDHO wants to send somebody over and look through all of my charts or, you know, 10 charts and, and they see, oh, you're not doing the vital signs on every patient, but in your CDHO, um, uh, what's this called again? Sorry, uh, practice profile. Um, you said that you take the vital signs on every patient. So why did you lie? You know, so I don't want to be caught in a lie as silly as that sounds, but it's true. Right. But I do, um, do, um, the vital signs at every new patient exam. Plus if they, if I feel that they need it. So if I saw a patient and they said, Oh, I'm not really feeling so good today. I've been sick for the past like a month. I'm going to be taking the vital signs. If they have high blood pressure, you know, things like that, that tells me that I should be, then yes, I'm going to take them. If, for example, taking the vital signs, I had said, I never do this, then they will probably call me and say, why aren't you taking the vital signs? Now, it could be that I have a dental assistant to take them for me, so that's possible, right? But then make sure to make a note of that somewhere else. So, um, yeah, on second thought, I don't think I need to read through all of these for you because we would be talking for hours probably, but if you have questions on a specific one, let me know. So I'm just going to walk through some of them that I thought might be a bit confusing. So for example, oral cancer screening. 
I don't have any special tool to do the oral cancer screening, but I do do it at every appointment. So I say that I do the A and the B at every appointment because I look inside the mouth. I look on the, on the outside. I check to make sure at every single appointment. So that is true. Do I do the other ones? No. So then I say it is not applicable because I don't have these. Um, and then I just left a little note saying, oh, well, I should, I should be more specific and say that I do oral cancer screening on every single um, adult. I do not do it for children because we don't have to, but then I'm thinking, oh, well, maybe I should do it for children because why not, right? So, you know, just things to think about. Um, taking indices. So, once again, this is something that I do do at every single um, appointment, actually having that said. Uh, periodontal attachment levels, I do not do always. I do as indicated um, by the client condition and likely yearly, but they don't actually ask you to be specific on everything. Um, and just as an example, again, um, it says, do I take pictures? Yes, I don't take x-rays, but I do do the intraoral photos every single appointment. So you see how sometimes I say always, sometimes I say um, as indicated by client condition, sometimes I say never. Um, they haven't really gotten anybody in trouble for, say you're taking, um, you're at this point where it is asking you, do you take indices and you do not. They have not gotten anybody in trouble as far as I know, if you're not doing any of the indices, but they might call you and say, we want you to start doing them and this is why, okay? But again, don't lie because if they come to your office, let's just say, and they want to see charts and you had said that you're doing indices on every single appointment, but you're not, that's lying and that's not a good thing, right? Um, some other things that I want to mention here. So uh, the microbiologic and the histolic tests, I do not do any testing for that. So that's why I had said never. That's not a bad thing. I just don't do them. Same thing for taking impressions and um, st uh, study models. I do not do that. Now, um, I, should, I should have mentioned earlier, this is for my um, um, mobile dental hygiene practice. I am still working in two practices twice a week now, actually, sorry, three times a week sometimes. Um, but come January, when I submit my portfolio, I will only be doing my own practice. So that's why I am, I am only filling out one of them because by the time I submit my portfolio, I know that I will just have my own practice. So this is specific to what I'm doing. So if you are a mobile hygienist or you, you are a dental hygienist who has her own practice or his own practice, let me know, I can help you. Same as if you are a, um, a uh, restorative hy um, hygienist, I can help you with that too, because we have to do things a little bit differently. Okay, um, and again, so talking about x-rays, I do not take x-rays in my own practice. So a lot of these questions I said, well, not applicable because I do not take them. I um, refer patients to a dental office if they need them. Um, the dental hygiene care plan and diagnosis. So this is kind of hard for me to answer because I'm thinking for every client, do I do all of this? Well, yes, I do, but I kind of felt like I wanted to explain things further. Like, um, let me see here. I'm just trying to think of something. Actually, no, for these ones, yes, I do do it every appointment for sure because you talk about the next appointment, you talk about what you want to establish for the next one, like, oh, you're brushing once a week, let's move that up to three times a week or whatever, right? So yes, those I do do every appointment. Um, the next one here, how often do you consult and or collaborate? So this is indicated by the client's condition for sure, because I see patients and yes, actually, I do tell all of them, well, you need to see a dentist for a dental exam also. And that would be, I would say for every client, but then I have some patients that tell me, well, I'm never going to see a dentist, so take it or leave it. So do I always do this? No, it's just a matter of what they need. Um, so that's why I left a little, um, 
um, line here saying that my clients see dentists at other offices because I'm their mobile dental hygienist where I don't have a dentist that works with me. So they'll probably call me up to have me explain this a little bit more, but that's okay. I'm expecting them to. Um, and I thought these questions were interesting. So it's talking about, are you able to make the following appointment related um, decisions in consultation with the client? So it's pretty much saying, so are you the one who is able to schedule up, um, appointments? Are you, are you able to say how long you want your appointments for? If I was working in an office, I probably would say no to some of these because as an example, um, the time interval between appointments, well, that's not, if I was in another office, well, that's not up to me, that's up to the office. When I work in other offices, I hardly get a lunch, I hardly get a break. So time interval between appointments, I would say no, I don't have control over that. But this is my own practice. So yes, I do have control over all of this, which is nice, right? But for a, a lot of you who are listening to this, you probably won't have control, right? So do not think, oh, how do they want me to answer this? Time interval between appointments, well, that's not up to me, but do, if I say no, am I gonna get in trouble? No, this is your honest answers, if that makes sense. Um, implementation, so this was kind of hard to answer too for me, because it said for each client under your care, how often is each of the following activities performed by you or by another team member? So for example, um, supra um, gingival um, debridement and scaling for adults. Well, I think I was, I was overthinking things and thinking, well, not all adults have supra gingival calculus. So if they don't, then I'm not gonna be scaling that. But that's, that's overthinking things too much. I think just what they're saying is do you clean teeth above the gum line? Or for some reason, do you clean teeth underneath the gum line and then somebody else comes in to do above the gum line? Which would not happen, right? But I think that's what they're getting at is they're trying to catch people who might be doing something wrong. You know, if they're having, if their hygienist is cleaning under the gum line, but they're having the assistant clean the teeth above the gum line, well, that's not right. You know, so maybe that's why they're asking these silly questions in my opinion, but it makes sense. That's probably why. Um, for example, tooth polishing to remove plaque and stain, well, some offices have the dental hygienist perform the scale only, and then the assistant would um, tooth polish to remove the plaque and the stain, right? So that might change your answer. Although, it's saying by you or another team member. So no, that wouldn't change your answer. I think it's more, you know, yeah, some of these questions, I think even I'm overthinking them, but try not to. So if you guys have questions, let me know. But do I clean teeth? Yes, I do. So that's why I said always. Do I scale teeth? Yes, so always. Do I polish teeth? Yes, always. Now, the correct answer, the most correct answer for the tooth polishing is probably indicated by client's condition, but um, because they want us now to do the selective polishing, but I'm not going to lie. I polish for everybody because that's what my clients want. So I say always. Um, and this one I thought was interesting. So um, who do you apply? Uh, topical uh, fluoride too. I thought that was neat. I I personally apply it to everybody because I am pro all the way, right? But you might only apply it for children. So then say always for children, but then say as indicated by client condition for adults, because if you don't do it, then don't say you do it or say never, you know? So read each question carefully. Um, and again, so topical application of, let's say for sealants. Do you put sealants on every client? Probably not. So always would be kind of a weird answer. If you said always to sealants, I think um, the CDHO would probably call you and say, why are you putting sealants on everybody? You know, that kind of thing. I don't know if they would be that picky, but that's why I said as indicated by client condition, because no, I don't put sealants on everybody. I personally don't like sealants because if they're not done properly, I find um, a lot of um, decay gets stuck underneath and then they have to end up getting a filling anyway. But that's just a side story for another day. But I do apply sealants when 
I know I can do a good job. You know, if the child's kicking, screaming, there's a lot of saliva, they don't know how to open properly, I'm not going to do sealant. But again, that's another story for another day. But all of these, it's just basically what you do. Um, again, I'm a restorative hygienist, so I might answer these things a little bit differently. Like for example, I am able to place temporaries. If you're a dental hygienist, you might not be able to um, place temporaries unless you're a restorative hygienist. So then you would answer this differently. So if you had said you always do this, then the CDHO would probably call you and say, why are you doing this? You're not a restorative hygienist. When they look at this for me, they will probably go, oh, she's placing temporaries. Is she a restorative hygienist? Yes, she is. So she's allowed to do that. So I think they're trying to catch you from doing things you're not supposed to do. Um, another example, I do not um, make um, um, mouth guards or anything, so that's why I had said not applicable, because I don't do this. Um, for ortho purposes, I don't do ortho in my own practice in any way, so that's why I said not applicable. So that's why you see sort of different answers here. Um, let's see here. Oh, it looks like I missed one. Um, under what authority do you perform the controlled acts of scaling teeth and root planing? I, I am um, a self-initiated hygienist, so that's why I did say the first one. If you're not self-initiated, your answer would be the next one. So under a um, standing order, everybody needs to sign that, that standing order sheet. If you haven't signed one, you probably did, but you just didn't realize you signed it. So under standing order. If you do not know, then the CDHO will probably call you and say, why don't you know what a standing order is? You know, that kind of thing, right? Um, again, not wrong answers here, but they want to catch people from making sure that they know what they're doing. And if they don't, that they, they want to help you. Um, and I thought this was interesting too. So how, how often do you or someone in your practice sharpen your instruments? So I sharpen them when I need to. I don't do it every day. I don't do every every week. I don't do it sometimes. I just check to see when I need to sharpen them and I sharpen them. But I'm lucky because I do own my own practice. So I have that time, plus it's my own instrument. So, there, so I'm the only one using them. So I kind of have a good idea, right? Um, let's see. And then, you know, more questions, you guys. So just sort of asking about um, anesthetic. Um, I can only use topical. So for a lot of these, I said never, because I don't work with a dentist. Um, talking about other services, I, I kind of had to look at these and go, oh, have, have I ever talked to somebody about stopping smoking? Um, actually, I'm going to say very rarely, because I really don't. Um, I do talk about their diet quite often, especially if they're eating a lot of sugar. So that's why I said um, routinely or always. So all of these, look through them and truly say, do I do this in my practice? Um, I feel like these are more self-explanatory, but again, you guys, if you have questions, let me know. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to leave the, the course links for you on the bottom. I have a separate course for um, the portfolio. If you, if you need help with your portfolio, because it doesn't have to be hard, trust me, you, you just have to be organized, but I do help you with all of that. Um, or if you're taking the quality assurance exam, I do offer a course for that too, which is so helpful. You do not have to buy like a $300 textbook. You guys don't do it because I have taken basically the textbooks that you need and put them in PowerPoint format but I have only uploaded what you need to know for the course. So you don't have to spend six months studying for the quality assurance exam. It is not like the national um, board exam, okay? It's different, but you still have to study for it. So I will leave the link for you guys for that on the bottom too. Um, I should mention, they do ask you to talk about, which I like, um, your waterline maintenance, um, how you handle your hand pieces, um, um, how you handle the sterilizing. If you're not sure or you don't know how to put it into words, then I suggest, which I do have it uploaded in our course also, I suggest looking at the CDHO, um, shoot, I can't think of what it's called and I don't have my iPad with me where I have it uploaded. 
they pretty much just talk about everything that you need to do as a dental hygienist, talking about the water lines, talking about uh, sterilization. Even if you look up um, infection control for a dental office, it will list everything there for you anyway. Don't copy and paste that, obviously, but read it and say, okay, do I do this? Do I do this? Yes, I do. Oh, no, I don't do this. So I should start doing this and then put it in your own words. Okay, so this I'm going to um, update more, but I just sort of did a quick thing here because um, I just kind of did this the other day to prepare for the video. So you guys can kind of see, um, have an idea of what's being done. Um, another example, I do not use the ultrasonic because you don't have to. I have my own practice, so I wanted to save some money and not purchase that. So I just um, use a new brush on all of my instruments to pre-clean them. So that's why I said I never use the ultrasonic for this. The indicators they want you to know or um, they want you to make a note of. And then the record keeping. So this kind of was a good reminder for myself to just sort of make sure that I am being up to date or um, I'm doing everything that I should be with um, the record keeping because I still have paper charts, again, to save some money for my own practice. But I do, I do my notes on the computer, but not a dental software. I just kind of do it on my own, just on the computer. So this was a nice friendly reminder for myself to make sure that I'm doing all of that. Um, I found this, I'm not really sure how to answer some, well, no, well, no, I shouldn't say not sure how to answer, but like it, it wants you to make a note of how long you see your clients for. So if it's a child, an adult, or a perio, and this was hard for me to answer because every child's different, every adult is different. Sometimes they take an hour, sometimes they take an hour and a half, sometimes they take 45 minutes. So, but I just said more than 45 minutes for, for everybody because technically, um, what, since I'm a mobile hygienist, it takes me two hours per um, appointment. And that includes cleaning up and setting up. So that's why I said more than 45 minutes for everybody. But again, I'll probably have to explain that a little bit. Um, oh yeah, this was hard for me too. So how many clients do you see on average during a total of seven working hours? And this is hard for me because sometimes I see one patient, sometimes I see six patients. So there's really no average because it's really hard to determine. So I just kind of said one. And then um, in the comments, I did explain it a little more there. Um, what else? These I feel are self-explanatory. Again, um, update your CPR. Make sure to do this yearly. I'm going to save this just so I don't forget to save it because I did add another question. Do not click I'm all done. This is for when you are ready to submit your portfolio. Always click save and continue working. Okay, always. Um, okay, you guys, so I'll cut this short for now. Sorry for all of my talking, but I wanted to go through that well for you guys. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the portfolio itself and kind of how I'm doing it and how I'm working backwards. So I take courses that interest me and then I write up a goal statement and then the learning activities after that. So I'll talk about that a little bit um, in the um, portfolio workshop course. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for listening. Let me know if you need anything because it's October, you guys. We need to be either taking our quality assurance exam by January or submitting our portfolio. So now's the time. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to do it over the holidays. So that's why I'm doing it like all now. And I'm moving in a month. So, oh my goodness, crazy, crazy. Lots of stuff. But thank you guys so much for listening and I'll see you in the next one.